And here's to the beginning. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> The beginning. Yay! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Dolly Parton was awesome. But do you ever feel that you're a joke, that people make fun of you? Oh, I know they make fun of me. The people, you know, have has thought the joke was on me, but it's actually been on the public. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I can change it at any time. The Imagination Library was designed to help children dream more, learn more, care more, be more and by golly it's really working i'm just happy that anything i do can help somebody else for this list we'll be looking at how and when the legendary dolly parton was simply amazing what's your reason for loving the queen of country let us know in the comments down below number 10 producing entertainment and equality with sand dollar entertainment strong is fighting it's hard and it's painful and it's every day it's what we have to do and we can do it together in 1986 parton and her then manager sandy gollin co-founded sand dollar entertainment a production company the company was one of the ones behind such films as buffy the vampire slayer and father of the bride well that's the thing about life is uh, the surprises the little things that sneak up on you and grab hold of you if you're wondering what sounds familiar about the company name, it's featured at the end of every episode of Buffy, the television program. On top of this, when Parton found out that a female Sand Dollar producer wasn't getting paid as much as her male counterparts, she took action. Producer Gail Berman was discovered to be shorted on the Buffy royalties, and Parton personally handed her a check to compensate. Number 9. Speaking for the Working Class in 9 to 5 you know, we should do that more often. Though Dolly Parton saw incredible fame from early on in her career, she's never forgotten where she came from, nor would others less fortunate than her have to endure. Though her song 9 to 5 was written for the 1980 film of the same title, its message resonates for working people. The song speaks of having no other choice than to work for an unsympathetic boss and being but a step on the boss man's ladder. If you ever say another word about me or make another indecent proposal, I'm gonna get that gun of mine and I'm gonna change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. It depicts the daily hustle of having to get up early and hurry off to a job in which they just use your mind and never give you credit. Interlaced in the lyrics, however, is the recognition of the individual's dream to get out of the 9-to-5 routine and accomplish their own goals. There's still work to be done. I still believe that, you know, women should get paid equal and should be treated with respect. I'm all about that, you know, and like I say, I don't get out and have to preach it or march in the streets. I write about it. I wrote 9-to-5. Number 8. Bringing Jobs to Her Childhood County Get away to Dollywood, it's home. Fun, fun. Though Parton left Sevier County, Tennessee at the age of 18, she also never forgot her roots. In 1986, she purchased interest in Silver Dollar City, a smallish theme park in the vicinity of her childhood county. The park was renamed Dollywood and was, and still is, a great success. Parton stated that she always told herself that should she find fame and fortune, she would return to her home state and create employment opportunities for those in and around the area. The park created thousands of jobs, and Parton hopes to open other locations at some point, creating similar opportunities for areas in need. Well, we always love the idea that whatever we do, whatever additions we have, we try to incorporate some of my life so we can connect that you know, with the fans and with the park. Number 7. Supporting the Black Lives Matter Movement Dolly Parton is infinitely quotable, and of the Black Lives Matter Movement, she has said, and of course, black lives matter. Do we think our little white ashes are the only ones that matter? No. When Parton found out one of her Dollywood attractions, the Dixie Stampede, contained an offensive word. Dixie was used in Confederate times to refer to the Southern states, as well as the title of a pro-Confederacy anthem, she changed it to Dolly Parton Stampede. In a comment regarding the renaming, Parton claimed innocent ignorance and said she would never wish to bring harm to anyone. It's refreshing to see someone acknowledge their past ignorance and bring immediate change to a potentially hurtful situation. But I do understand people uh, having to make themselves known and felt and seen. Number six, turning down Elvis. It's no fault of Elvis, you know, he loved the song. When Elvis Presley wanted to cover Parton's song, I Will Always Love You, she was ecstatic. One 
One of the greats took notice and loved one of her songs, and this could have been an amazing opportunity. She was invited to the studio for the recording, and was filled with excitement. However, on the eve of the studio date, Parton received a phone call from Elvis's manager, Colonel Parker. Parker stated that for any song Elvis sang or covered, he required half or all of the publishing rights. The deal fell through at this point, as Parton was giving half the rights to her family. Of course, that's stuff that I'm leaving for my family. And uh, he said, well, then we can't record the song, and I was just heartbroken. Despite the massive attention she would have received following the cover song, she chose family over fame. Number 5. Donating for COVID Vaccine Research when life is good again. The quest for a vaccine defined much of the COVID-19 pandemic era, and Dolly Parton aided in the only way she could, by donating $1 million to Tennessee's Vanderbilt University Medical Center in April 2020. And just the fact that I think this whole thing, as awful as it is, has really brought people together. I know that I'm in a position to help, and that's why I try to do it in every way that I can. The center went on to help with research that helped Moderna, an ambitious American pharmaceutical company in the race to develop a vaccine. Which explains why the vaccine is working 95 percent of the time. Ever the humble public servant, Parton stated, I'm just happy that anything I do can help somebody else. And when mm -hmm. I donated the money to the COVID fund, I just wanted it to do good. And evidently, That's it exactly is. And let's just doing. hope we find a cure real soon. Number four, defending her LGBTQ plus fan base. So I'm out to, you know, kind of pull people in, not separate people. So I just love people and people seem to love me and that makes me feel really good. The country music domain traditionally has a heavily conservative following, where acceptance of certain kinds of difference is sometimes difficult. However, Dolly Parton is, as always, a shining exception. I always believe that a person should be who they are and you should be comfortable being who you are, and people should leave you alone to be who you are. Due to her amazing style and verve, coupled with her highly praised and admired music, Parton has amassed a large LGBTQ plus following, which she greatly accepts and outwardly appreciates. Is it true that you once said uh, that it's a good thing you were born a girl, otherwise you would have been a drag queen? <laughs> yes, it is true, because I'm so over-exaggerated, and I have so many fans that, you know, yeah. the gay community. Asked in an interview about this fan base, Parton responded with, quote, They know I completely love and accept them. I think everybody should be allowed to be who they are and to love who they love. I don't think we should be judgmental. I keep saying, well, if you're the fine Christian that you are you think you are, why are you judging people? Why are you, uh, that's God's job. We're not God. We're not judges. You know, we're supposed to love one another. Number three, founding her imagination library. We send these books to them in their little name, with their name on it. They look forward to going to the mailbox. This is theirs. This is mine. So I am going to either learn to read it or I'm going to make somebody teach me how to read it. In 1995, Dolly Parton founded Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, a nonprofit organization that provides children with free books from birth until they begin school. The Imagination Library was designed to help children dream more, learn more, care more, be more. And by golly, it's really working. The library began in Parton's home county of Sevier and was so successful that it is now open to a number of other countries. Parton created the foundation in honor of her father, who was illiterate. So he didn't get to go to school, so daddy couldn't read and write. And that always troubled him and bothered him. And so I wanted to do something special for him. So I got the idea to start this program and let my dad help me with it. Parton stated that she always thought her father could have achieved his goals had he been able to read. Before he died, he told Parton that the library was the most important thing she has ever done. It is of vital importance that children are encouraged to read from a young age, and Parton has made that possible for countless youngsters. If you can teach children to read, that teaches them to dream, and if you can dream, you can be successful, and if you're successful, then you've got a good life ahead of you, so hopefully this will all work. Number two, responding to criticism. Well, I know that I always like to wear a lot of makeup, more than probably I should wear, but I think more is more, and whoever made up that less is more is full of it. Early on in her career, Parton was subject to much criticism based on her appearance. However, she's never let any of this get her down. 
In a 1977 interview with Barbara Walters, when asked why she dressed as she did and wore so much makeup, Parton responded that she chose to be that way and simply doesn't like being like everyone else. You don't have to wear the extreme clothes, right? No, it's, a, it's certainly a choice. I don't like to be like everybody else. Walters then asked her, perhaps a little boldly, if she felt that she was a joke, ridiculed by people. Parton basically responded that the joke's on them, as she's completely secure in herself and can't afford to mess around with makeup and clothes. But do you ever feel that you're a joke, that people make fun of you? Oh, I know they make fun of me. The people, you know, have has thought the joke was on me, but it's actually been on the public. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I can change it at any time. That self-confidence is an admirable attitude towards life. It's still me, and it's mine. And like I say, I like to think that I I might be artificial, but I'm real where it counts, right here in my heart. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Expressing her drag queen love, Dolly loves her countless drag personas. And I really, more than anything, appreciate you keeping my secret that my real name is Leslie Jordan, and I'm just in drag. Dolly Parton, living legend and queen of country music, stop talking! Reading story time. Dolly provided virtual story time during the pandemic. Hello, I'm Dolly Parton, the book lady from the Imagination Library, and I'm going to be reading a very special book today. This is called The Little Engine That Could. Speed writing iconic songs. She wrote both Jolene and I Will Always Love You in one day. We found an old cassette when we were getting through all my songs, going down in my basement, and all those old cassettes where I had written songs. And Jolene and I Will Always Love You was on the same cassette. So if I didn't write it on the same day, it was during that same week or that period of time while I still had that particular cassette. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Consistently focusing on philanthropy. We are so honored that the 100th millionth book That's a lot will of books. be given to the Library of Congress for our youngest. As we've seen, Dolly Parton has definitely not been selfish with her fame and fortune and her lengthy and eclectic list of philanthropic acts is even more impressive. She's also helped support or donated to the Red Cross, hospital wing extensions, bald eagle preservation, victims of wildfires, and the list goes on. It's personal for me to help the people from the wildfires because that's my home. These are my people. These are neighbors. These are people I grew up with, their businesses, their homes. I mean, this is a part of my life, even though they might not be blood kin, but they're still my family. She's received a plethora of awards, praise, and honors for her good works, and they're all definitely well-deserved. The sheer amount of donations she has made to various causes and foundations is immense. Her heart, however, truly seems to belong to providing education and literacy. She kept her word, and the students made a commitment, and the dropout rate decreased from 30% to 6%. In 2009, she received an honorary doctorate in humane letters from the University of Tennessee for, among other things, being a lifelong advocate for education. I've done something good. I've done plenty bad, I'm sure. But I just hope that I'll be remembered well. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.